Welcome to an example of a mixture problem that can be solved using a separable differential equation. A tank contains 1,080 liters of pure water. Solution that contains 0.05 kilograms of sugar per liter enters a tank at a rate of three liters per minute and is thoroughly mixed. The new solution drains out of the tank at the same rate. Part A, we're asked how much sugar is in the tank at the beginning where we're told the tank begins with pure water and therefore there are zero kilograms of sugar in the water at time t equals zero. Notice how this also tells us the function y or y of t is equal to the amount of sugar in the tank at time t. Part b, we're asked to find the amount of sugar after t minutes given by the function y of t and then for part c, as t becomes large, what is the value of y of t approaching? In other words, we want to find this limit here. So we can model this situation using the differential equation dA dt equals r sub one minus r sub two. In our case, though, the function is going to be y of t, not a of t. So we'll actually use a differential equation dy dt equals r sub one minus r sub two where dy dt equals the rate of change of the sugar in the tank. R sub one equals the rate of change of the sugar entering the tank. And R sub two equals the rate of change of the sugar leaving the tank. So to find these rates of change, we'll find the product of the concentration of sugar in the solution and the flow rate. So let's begin by finding R sub one, which is the rate at which the sugar is entering the tank. The solution entering the tank contains 0 0.05 kilograms of sugar per liter. So we'll have 0 0.05 kilograms per liter times the flow rate, which is given as three liters per minute. We have the concentration of sugar in the solution times the flow rate for the rate at which the sugar is entering the tank. Notice how liters simplifies out, and therefore R sub one is equal to 0 0.15 and the units would be kilograms per minute. And now we need to find R sub two, which is the rate at which the sugar is leaving the tank. So again, we'll have a concentration of a solution times a flow rate, where the flow rate leaving is the same as a flow rate in. So the flow rate is three liters per minute. And the concentration of the solution leaving the tank is going to be equal to the amount of sugar in the tank at any time t which is given by the function y of t, or let's just say y, divided by the amount in the tank, which is always 1,080. So the amount in the tank is always constant because the flow rate in and the flow rate out are the same. If they were different, the amount in the tank would actually be a function of t, not a constant. And the units here again are kilograms per liter. Again, liters simplify out. So we're left with three y divided by 1,080 kilograms per minute. But this fraction does simplify to y over 360 kilograms per minute. The differential equation that models this situation would be dy dt equals r sub one minus r sub two, which would be 0 0.15 minus y divided by 360. And now we need to solve this separable differential equation. Let's do this on the next slide. We want this to be in the form of the y terms times dy equals the t terms times dt. So if we multiplied both sides by dt, we'd have differential y equals the quantity 0 0.15 minus y divided by 360 times dt. So to get these two terms on the left side, we'll divide both sides by this quantity. So this would give us one over, let's write this as 0 0.15, let's write this as minus one over 360y dy equals dt. And now we'll integrate both sides. So we have the integral of one over this quantity equals the integral of dt if we want one dt. And now here we'll have to perform u substitution where u would be equal to 0 0.15 minus one over 
y. So differential u is equal to negative one over 360 dy. So if we solve this for dy, notice how negative 360 du equals dy. So if it's helpful, we can think of all of this as negative 360 one over u du. The antiderivative in terms of u would be negative 360 natural log absolute value of u, which means in terms of y, we'd have negative 360 natural log absolute value of 0 0.15 minus one over 360 y. We would have a constant of integration, but we'll go ahead and put the constant on the right. So we'd have equals, the integral of one with respect to t is t, so we have t plus, let's call it c sub one. Now we need to work on solving this for y. So for the first step, let's multiply both sides by negative one over 360, which would give us natural log of the absolute value of 0 0.15 minus one over 360 y equals negative one over 360 t, and then minus one over 360 times c sub one, which would just be another constant. Let's go ahead and let that constant be equal to c sub two. So let's say plus c sub two. And now let's write the log equation as an exponential equation. Remember, natural log is log base e. So we'd have e raised to the quantity on the right equals this quantity here. Or we can say 0 0.15 minus one over 360 y equals e raised to the power of negative one over 360 t plus c sub two. But now on the right side, because we're adding exponents, we can write this as a product. We can write the right side as e raised to the power of negative one over 360 t times e to the power of c sub two. But e to the power of c sub two is just some other constant. So let's let e to the power of c sub two be equal to c sub three. So we can write this as 0 0.15 minus one over 360 y equals c sub three times e raised to negative one over 360 t. And now again, we still want to solve this for y, so for the next step, we'll subtract 0 0.15 on both sides. And now we'll multiply both sides by negative 360 to solve for y. So we have y equals negative 360 times the right side. Let's go ahead and distribute here. So we have y or y of t equals, notice for this first product we'll have negative 360 times c sub three times e raised to this power, but negative 360 times c sub three is just another constant, so let's let c be equal to negative 360 times c sub three. So we'd have c times e raised to negative one over 360t. And then we'd have negative 360 times negative 0 0.15, which equals positive 54. So we have plus 54. So now we're almost there, but we need to find the particular solution using the initial condition that y of zero equals zero. Remember we know y of zero equals zero, because the first question was how much sugar is in the tank at the beginning, which again gave us y of zero equals zero. So if y of zero equals zero, we can determine the value of c by substituting zero for t and zero for y of t. So we'd have the equation zero equals c times e raised to the power of negative one over 360 times zero plus 54. So we'd have zero equals, this is just c times e to the zero, which is c plus 54. So c equals negative 54. So the particular solution to the differential equation, which gives us the y of t for the situation is y of t equals, again c is negative 54 times e raised to the power of negative one over 360 times t plus 54. 
So going back to our first slide, this is the answer for part B. And then for part C, we want to find the limit as t approaches infinity of y of t. So to find this limit, it might be helpful to rewrite this as the limit as t approaches infinity of negative 54 over e raised to the power of positive one over 360 times t plus 54. Notice as t approaches infinity, this denominator here increases without bound, and therefore this term approaches zero, and therefore this limit is equal to zero plus 54, which equals 54. So this tells us as time increases without bound, the amount of sugar in the tank approaches 54 kilograms. I hope you found this helpful.